Growing up, got into a lot of trouble. Uh, throughout my late teens and 20s, I continued to make poor choices, which put me in very life-threatening situations, you know. I was in two automobile accidents, uh, being under the influence of alcohol and other drugs, uh, numerous fights, I uh, was shot at, I uh, had guns pointed in my face, uh, just all kind of just very uh, dangerous situations, you know. Poor self-esteem, hopelessness, uh, insecurity, a lot of fear, a lot of self-hate was embedded so deep in my subconscious mind that I became emotionally and spiritually bankrupt. You know, that pattern of, of pain, it was, it was vicious, you know. I learned that hurt people hurt people. But I remember my last bid, um, I was sentenced to two to five years in prison, locked away from my daughter. I remember laying on my bunk bed and just deciding right there and then, you know, I had to make some changes in my life. The one program that helped me the most uh, was the uh, drug treatment program within the prison. Then after that, the counselors, they hired me uh, to be a peer mentor, helping other inmates that was incarcerated with me. And I appreciated that opportunity because it allowed me to see that I could support other people on their journey towards wellness. I don't know, I've been at odds, you know, with my own mind for a really long time and struggled really deeply with just a very deep sadness and depression. So dealing with that led me in a not so traditional kind of path through high school and college and all of that. You know, sought treatment in and out of psych hospitals and treatment centers like 13 different times and just ended up in a really bad place. Eventually everything kind of coming to a head when I was like 18 and had tried to kill myself about five times within a year and a half. It was a really long path for me going and seeking treatment and uh, going through different residential programs, trying every possible medication that was out there, every talk therapy, CBT, and everything in between. None of it really working for me. And eventually I found yoga. And that was, for me, that was what saved my life. Uh, from age 10 to 14, I experienced some uh, sexual trauma in my life. That period of my life really started to shape the direction in which the rest of my life um, kind of ended up taking. And I would have these kind of massive anxiety attacks. I didn't make the connection at that time that maybe why those things were happening to me might have been because of the trauma I had, had experienced. Because I, I still hadn't found a way in my life in my 30s to to, to find healing from this stuff. Um, I ended up reaching out for help again. So the only uh, places that I, that I could think of or knew about, uh, and that was you know, outpatient programs or, or when I was in crisis at any given point, I might you know, check myself into the hospital. Another medication, another diagnosis, hospitalization, whatever was, those were the answers I was getting. I got to a point where I was on 30 pill, taking 30 pills, psychotropic medications every day. And I actually have a picture here of that person and who I was then. And uh, I brought it to kind of show the difference because the success is that this is, this is where I am now. And that was your original question was, how did I get to where I am now? But this, I don't know if you can see that, but this, this person here is me um, just a, a few years ago. But that was stable. That was, you know, quote unquote, stability. That, that was the, the, what I was being told was the desirable state to be in. And so I have another picture of where I am now. This is just a few weeks ago. Um, myself and my family uh, at the finish line of a uh, 50K ultramarathon race, my first ultramarathon. I'm now a, a runner. Um, and, uh, and so those are my four kids and my, and my wife. Advocacy Unlimited is a organization that's staffed by people with lived experience, psychiatric and addiction histories. We've been around for 20 years. Our focus is to give voice to those that have been marginalized and oppressed, particularly those with psychiatric histories. And we have this place called Toiva, which is something different. It's a safe space where people can come together and partake in holistic healing modalities to get involved in their own well-being, to find something that nourishes them. And that's where healing happens. I started um, exercising, you know, started feeling better. I got into to meditation, I got into yoga. You know, the caseworker that I was working with, she linked me to Advocacy Unlimited. And that's where I took the recovery um, university training to be a recovery support specialist. Cause I wanted to give back, you know, I want to give back. 
helping other people that went through similar experience with different emotional distress or different addictive states that they experience in their life. I never thought of any of this kind of lived experience as anything more than something that I had to hide. So to be able to talk openly about things that I never spoke to anybody about before um, has been incredibly healing for me. You know, the whole like your body is your temple and treat it that way thing was so far-fetched for me because my body had always just been the battleground for, you know, the war going on in my mind. I've been living completely, completely in my head, completely absorbed in, in my own misery. And so yoga, you know, un reunited my, my mind and my body. You know, it gave me a sense of community, you know, place where I felt like I belonged again and a safe space to, to be myself and to just learn to, to love myself and, and love my body again and, and all these things that I hadn't done in a really long time. Meditation for me is, I, I do trail running, so I go out there in the woods at the state parks and stuff. I'm out there on the trails, I'm running for hours at a time. I'm like, just me and the birds and the trees and the universe just working things out. It's that connection between my mind and my body and my spirit, I feel it all comes together at those moments. And you know, sometimes like the trauma stuff is like, I feel like I can let go of it. It's, I don't know, maybe we like hold this stuff inside of our actual muscles or whatever we do, but when, when I'm out there, it's like I, I'll just break down crying and, and, and I feel like a release. Like it just, I'm, I'm letting go. Um, so for me, that's, that's a really important uh, way that I've, I've helped myself to find healing, you know, uh, to find wellness in my life. So over the last 85 to 90 years, it's been this real shift towards medicalizing, pathologizing human experiences, difficult human emotions, shift away from building the healer within, but now we have to you know, bring it back into the culture where we had. Doing things like yoga and meditation is healing. It builds strength and it allows you to get through difficult times and, and find meaning in those difficult times and not just try to escape from them. People come in just as they are and just giving, giving them that love, giving them that compassion, giving them that support. Toivo instills that hope and that inspiration and empowerment by offering a holistic approach to health and healing. And that helped me in my life. You know, my, my reactions uh, were not me being a damaged and broken person. My suicide attempts and my eating disorder were normal reactions to insane situations. To come to a place like this where I'm beginning to reframe the way that I, that I look at all of my past experiences, that part has been incredibly healing. Whatever you're going through, my belief, everyone's belief around, us, around me, hopefully our organization is, whatever you're going through, you will get through. So we come together, we're doing these healing modalities together, and we're seeing and experiencing ourselves change and transform and heal. And we're seeing what it is we need to fight for. Because one thing on the advocacy side, I was finding that the community wasn't sure what they're advocating for. Was their problem, their struggles because the mental health system wasn't big enough, they could, didn't have access to current services, or was it that the current services weren't good enough? We want people to get involved in other things, other alternatives so they can see we don't need more of the same, we need better. And now we have a real sense of what better means. This event brings together the uh, two most prominent pieces of myself. My belief in the healing power of holistic practices and the struggles that I went through that make me the person that I am today. I think it's an amazing time in our lives where this many people would show up to an event like this to show their support for hope and healing. I constantly meet people who went through the mental health system and who are not a part of it anymore, who are not taking medication, who are not going to therapy, who are not like patients at all, who don't have diagnoses and sometimes did have really, really extreme ones. And for me, that's where I find the greatest hope is where I meet people who ultimately found out how in their regular day-to-day -day life to live in healthy ways. And I feel like that's what I'm still doing and still learning how to do it better so, so I can keep growing. We go all around the nation and we talk to people just like we're talking here today and we show that, that look, we have communities, we have pockets, we're not alone. You know, the best way to reach people, like Chris Grosso had mentioned, is through conscious media. And not only do I have love for myself today, but I have love for the life that I am living. As a part of Toivo and Advocacy Unlimited, 
I experience healing every day. Healing through working with others with lived experience. Healing through the shared ideal that our experiences are valuable. And healing through the ability to give back to others like myself each and every day. I constantly wonder how things might have been different for me if I had a form like this available to me when I was in the throes of crisis. We have some obligation, the people that get through difficult times, to let people know that there's ways through. And there's a lot of different ways. My friends, the people I work with at Advocacy Unlimited, our community, our people, you name the diagnosis, you name the life experience that have gotten through it, found meaning in how these amazing lives, creative and just incredible, compassionate people, I know people heal. You know, and I, I just feel like that's the message we gotta convey. Yeah, life is really hard sometimes. It's also really beautiful sometimes. So we gotta hang in there in the hard times so we can get to those beautiful times. It is charcoal under pressure that becomes the diamond. It is the dark, murky, muddy water that gives us the lotus. It's important to look for the meaning in the struggles because they are there, they really are there.